Long ago, in what is now Taito Ward in Tokyo, there was a small field known as Asajigahara. The field itself was of little importance, but it was located in an important location connecting the Mutsu and Shimosa provinces. As such, it saw quite a few travellers coming to and fro, and many times, these travellers would need a place to spend the night. As luck would have it, there was a single house located out in this large, empty plain. If travellers wanted somewhere to spend the night, this was the only place around, and so many found themselves on this lone house's doorstep, knocking and hoping for the best. The little house in the middle of nowhere was owned by an elderly woman, and she greeted each of the travellers with a warm smile, leading them inside and granting them a place to sleep for the night. Not only did the old woman give these, no doubt exhausted travellers, a place to stay, she also gave them a warm, hearty meal and topped it off with some delicious sake. It was more than any traveller could have asked for, but it didn't end there. All of this was served by the elderly woman's young and very beautiful daughter, who caught the eye of many a traveller. If there was one thing that the travellers could complain about, it would be the pillow. Although the old woman laid out a futon for the travellers to sleep in, the pillow was made of stone. Most ignored this small fact because who were they to argue after being otherwise received so well? The old woman had taken them in, fed them a warm meal and given them sake, and all of this had been delivered by her beautiful daughter. What was a stone pillow on top of all that? At this point, the exhausted traveller would soon fall asleep, belly nice and full and perhaps slightly also tipsy from the sake. It sure beat sleeping out in the wilderness, that was for sure. Yet, it would be the last thing any of them ever thought. The stone pillow existed for a very good reason, and it wasn't because the old woman couldn't afford any better. What the travellers failed to notice upon getting into bed was the massive stone also tied above them. This was no sweet old lady. This was the Onibaba of Asajigahara, a vicious woman who had claimed many lives and would continue to do so. The old woman would wait until the travellers fell asleep on the stone pillow and then sneak into their room once she was sure they were out. Then she would cut the rope holding that stone above them and, well, you can imagine the rest. A human head was no match for two large stones. After the traveller was dead, the old woman would not only take whatever money or valuables they had on them, she would also steal their clothes and then dispose of the body in the nearby Ubagaike pond. This happened over and over every time a traveller stopped by that little house in the middle of nowhere. Obviously, rumours soon popped up that something wasn't right over there, but they remained whispers on the wind, and travellers continued stopping by regardless. It was, after all, the only place to stay on the long road between Mutsu and Shimosa. And as for the old woman's beautiful daughter, well... She wasn't very pleased with her murderous mother. She tried several times to get her to stop, but her mother refused to listen to her. Whenever a traveller stopped by, she would treat him kindly, feed him, then lay out a bed for him in the other room. Then, when he fell asleep, she would kill him, take everything he owned, and then dump the body. One day, her daughter decided that she just couldn't take it any longer. A young man, barely older than a boy, stopped by their house and asked to stay the night. The ritual carried on as usual, with the beautiful daughter serving the traveller as the old woman prepared his bedding, and the massive stone that was to crush his head in. The daughter took this opportunity to tell the boy to run. He was in grave danger, and her mother was going to kill him. The boy, although shocked, didn't need to be told twice. He fled the building, and the daughter dressed herself up in his stead, climbing into the bed laid out for him. 
The elderly woman waited as always, snuck into the room, and suspecting that her victim was asleep, cut the rope. Down came the stone and crushed the victim's head, only it wasn't that young traveller. As the old woman went about removing the traveller's clothes, she realised that it wasn't the boy, but rather her daughter. She was, needless to say, heartbroken. Her daughter had tried all this time to get her mother to stop, but she refused to listen. Now, in a last-ditch attempt to stop her mother, she had sacrificed herself in an attempt to get her to see the light. Having lost the only thing that meant anything to her, the old woman took her dead daughter to Ubagaike Pond and threw herself in with her, taking her own life in penance. In the end, it wasn't the traveller's riches that the old woman was after, though. Not really. They were helpful, yes, especially to an old woman living out in the middle of nowhere, but her murderous spree all stemmed from an incident long ago. A traveller stopped by that little house and asked to spend the night. The elderly woman warmly greeted the man and let him in. She fed him and offered him sake. But once the old man saw her beautiful young daughter, he attacked. The elderly woman was unable to stop him, and the horrific assault traumatised both mother and daughter. It was this incident that led the elderly woman to kill every traveller who stopped by, twisting her heart into something dark, angry and unforgiving. Some versions of this story claim that the young boy the daughter sent away was actually Kannon from the nearby Sensoji temple, and Kanon was there to teach the old woman a harsh lesson. Through Kanon's power, the old woman then turned into a dragon and disappeared into the lake with her dead daughter's body, never to be seen again. Other versions also claim that the boy was supposed to be the old woman's 1,000th victim, yet it ended up being her unfortunate daughter instead. And. As for that stone pillow that she used to crush travellers' heads, it's now said to reside in Myo-onji Temple, a sub-temple of Sensoji. That stone pillow, and the tragic story of the old woman who turned into a fearsome killer because of the wrongs done to her daughter, have both survived until the modern day, both serving as a reminder to never lose your humanity, or you may end up paying the ultimate price. But what do you guys think about this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.